Hey, good afternoon guys. Steve Kf 5 Whip. Hope everyone's doing okay out there. Today I wanted to show you FL Rig and FL Digi. A little bit about how I use them, how I uh, do uh, record logs or, or uh, update QRZ and so forth. Um, so I want to kind of show you some stuff. So what I do is I have FL Rig and FL Digi. Uh, I use FL Rig as the main control to the radio and then I use FL Digi as a client to FL Rig. So I, I like using them both together because the FL Rig gives me a lot of radio control, cat control, um, and I'm not fingering the radio all day long. I can basically do it all on the computer, so it, it's really nice. So what I do first is I go ahead and uh, power on my radio. And what I will do next is I will launch FL Rig, and it'll make a connection to the radio. Then I launch FL uh, Digi. All right, so let me show you what we got going on here real quick, the connection scheme here. So basically what I got going on is uh, if I go to Config and go to Setup, uh, go to transceiver. Uh, the rig is 991A. The COM port is 3, which is the Silicon Valley uh, uh, enhanced port. I'll show you those in a second. Baud rate's always 38400. And these are the defaults. If you need to activate these to make any changes, uh, you, you can make it pull a little faster if you want to. Uh, if you want to pull it every 250, um, I think it's milliseconds. You can. Okay, it makes it pull a little bit faster. The other thing, too, is uh, you may not see this green. If it's not green, just click the Initialize button, and that will actually make the physical link between the software and your radio. And we just did that. We were already linked, but it's good. Now, what happened here is one of our little screens disconnected here. So let me show you how I'm going to fix that. See the little down button here? This shows the extra controls. Uh, these are the cat controls I use. This is voice on tab A. Tab B is CW. And tab C, I'm going to program that in another video. We're going to go back and do some VHF, UHF stuff going from VFO to uh, memory locations, but we'll do that later. So a couple of highlights real quick here. You've got your volume control on the actual physical radio itself. Um, you've got the, uh, uh, what they call the gain control. I always make sure that is set to auto. Uh, one tip I'll tell you, I accidentally turned it off one time and my receive, uh, the signals were total distortion. Um, and because I didn't have this setting on, it was off. And you see where there's no, nothing right there in that little gray area. That means it's turned off. So always make sure that is set to auto. Very important. Uh, then, of course, I've got power. I've got this set to 100 watts uh, voice, uh, but I'm going to go over to CW for a second. Let's go to 2850 CW, and I've got power set there down to 25 watts. So mainly I transmit between 5 watts and 25 watts on CW. Okay, so let's go over to FL, Rig, FL Digi for a second. Let me show you where these connections are here. Uh, if you go to uh, configure, and if you go down to where it says rig, you go to FL Rig. These are the boxes I have checked right there. Enable FL Rig to act uh, or as a control point for FL Digi. FL Digi will act as a client. And then, of course, shut down FL Rig with FL Digi. So if I shut down, if I'm done for the day, I can just click on um, FL Rig, and uh, basically it will shut down the software and it will also shut down the radio. Okay, one other thing, device manager, let's take a look at where this driver is real quick. Uh, just in case you're curious, go to device manager. And if you look right here under ports, you'll see uh, Silicon Labs uh, UR, USB to UART driver. Basically, your COM3 is your radio cat control with uh, your uh, basically all your uh, uh, control, logic controls, you know, audio gain, all the settings and so forth, cat control. Uh, tab number four is specifically for... Um, is specifically for uh, toggling. For example, if you use FL Digi to transmit CW, you need to act, you, you, that support it will use. And I'll show you there's a way that you can make sure that works. Because a lot of times what happens is everyone will program all these cool macros and everything, and um, they don't work. So I'll show you where you check that is. You basically go back to configure, and you go down to uh, CW. Excuse me, you go to modem. CW, then you go down to DTRS settings, 
right here. Now you want to hit click connect. Now right now that's a light yellow meaning it's connected, but if there if it's gray and you don't see a light yellow there, that means it won't it won't work. If you try to send one of these macros, so just go in here and just click it and it'll turn yellow and then at that point FL Digi the uh, macros now have control of the uh, what they call the basically the the toggle com if you will and that's the com port number 4. Okay, moving right along here. So what I do when I call CQ, I have a couple of tools that I use. One thing is I have a, a notepad down here. And what I like to do is I like to log the, the call, the name, the frequency, and my power. And what I do is I copy this and I paste it in QRZ in the notes section or in the comment section. That way, if someone looks me up, they can see that my rigs, uh, you know, antenna, YouTube, SKCC and so forth. So it kind of gives them a little more information. I do the same thing for AM and upper sideband. So if you ever go to my logbook uh, on QRZ, you'll see I have all this information here from all the contacts. So you can kind of see what antenna I was running, what power, you know, things of that nature. Okay, so let's, uh, the other thing I do is I uh, have um, a couple of tabs set up here. The first one is I have QRZ running on tab. I also have SKCC. Those are the two critical ones because when I'm copying CW, a lot of the activity I work on is on 1450 and 7055. Uh, 7055 is good from, say, 5 p.m. to 7 a.m. the following morning. And then 20 meters, which is 1450, that's usually good from about 8 a.m. over to, you know, 6 or 7 p.m. in the evening. So think of it, for 20 meters, your daytime band, 40 meters, your nighttime band. A lot of times what I'll do is I'll get up like at 3 or 4, or 4 in the morning and I'll turn on the radio and usually about 5 a.m. Central Time, you'll start seeing people calling CW and you can usually make some pretty good contacts on 7055. Um, and what's kind of funny is a lot of the contacts I, I am starting to recognize the call sign. So some of it, some of them is just the same old guys, which is pretty cool because uh, 7 055 is an SKCC frequency, and same thing with 1450. So you get a lot of SKCC, SKCC business there, meaning it's slow traffic, easy to copy, you know, usually, you know, nine, usually eight to 12 words per minute, and it, it's manageable, and I can copy it. Okay, so what I do is uh, if I'm, I'll go ahead and let's go over here to uh, 20 meter real quick, and I'll show you what that's going to look like. We're, we're going to see some activity, so I click on the, let me go over these real quick. Uh, uh, this right here is, uh, I use the logbook control. So, for example, uh, if I look up my call sign, KI5JUF, uh, what I can do is it'll pull me up, and if I click on this button here, it'll also populate the uh, QRZ page. And it'll also, if I click this button here, it's going to put it in my log. So you see right now, this is my log right here. Uh, last contact I had was with Alan Whiskey 4. Uh, I guess sometime this 1424 this morning. Um, so if I click uh, this button right here, it's going to log it. And if you look right there now, there it is, Stephen Hope. So typically what I would do is, <clears throat> if I have a CW contact, is I would just go in here and I would type, for example, um, you know, I made a contact with Steve and his call sign was, uh, whoops, that's USB. I need to go to, to uh, CW. I made a call sign to Steve or his call sign was K. I'm going to delete all this in uh, the system, but I'm just going to go through and show you. Name is Steve. And I'm going to put the frequency down, 28.0050. And I'm running 25 watts on the Comet, and I'll copy this right here. And now what I do is I click here, and it says, actually, I can't really log a contact, so let me... Let me look up my dad real quick, K5EHL. We'll just log one to him real quick. And I'm gonna click log right here. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to select 10 meter. Okay. 
and I'm going to change that to 50. The mode is CW, and let's say, for example, you gave me a 599, and I gave you a 5, or I sent you a 599, you gave me a 579. I'm running 25 watts, but this is where I copy this right here. So I copy this, and I stick it here uh, under the, the, uh, the comments tab. So in the future, uh, in my logbook, it will have all this information, and uh, Ron will also have this information. So that's how I log, and I'm going to go ahead and click Save Record. And now, if you look right here, you see this is he's in the log right here at 10 meter. And if I go up here and type K5EHL, K5EHL, and I hit the look up button, it's going to find him again. And then if I click right here, that's going to save it to my log. So now I've got Ronald in there also. So I'll just delete this out here just to get rid of it. But that's how I log. So I keep track of everything. Uh, I log it in FL Digi, and I also log it in QRZ. So let me go back to my log book, and I'm going to go here. And I'm going to delete that log. All right, so it's gone. So that's how I do my logging, basically, is I just uh, I, I write everything down. I've got a big notebook here, that I'm, so I'm always copying as much CW as I can. Um, <clears throat> that way, you know, the main thing is if you get the call sign or if, you, um, if you're doing a lot of SKCC business, what you're going to find is guys are always swapping SKCC numbers. So the power of this is, say for example, uh, I get a guy's SKC, SKCC number, and let me just look one up that I, that I got this morning here. I picked up a number 689, 6891S. And the beauty of this is, if I, if I can get his... SKCC number, I can find out his call sign. So the beauty of it is there, I can look it up right there, and there he is right there. That was Bud, Whiskey 3, India, Quebec. He was on this morning. I, I didn't make a contact with him, but I, I was able to copy him because a lot of times what I'll do is if there's a slow CW going on on the radio, I'll go over there and get the notebook and pen, and I'll start copying it. That's how I learned. Is I just kind of sit there and copy the, the exchange back and forth, and I'm able to kind of learn the protocols for SKCC, uh, Whiskey Echo Sierra contests. Uh, uh, today is a sprint, short sprint center contest. SKC, SKCC has a lot of different activities going on that they have. Uh, for example, they have the slow speed Souter, which is the uh, CQS, uh, which is going on today, the first day of the month. Uh, and of course, you've got your uh, SKCC weekend sprintathon, which is the uh, WES protocol. So these are just various things. Then you've got the um, typical uh, SKCC number exchange protocol. So SKCC has got a lot of cool stuff going on. And I'll, I'll show you in a different video a little bit about more about what's going on there. So um, one other thing. Uh, let's go find some activity real quick. I want to show you a little bit about what these buttons do down here. This one here is kind of important because this sets what's called your threshold level. What you're looking at here is, this is your decibel level right now on your noise floor. So right now on 20 meter, the noise floor is actually pretty low. It's about uh, 70, 72 dB. So if I go over to uh, 40 meter, I'm going to have a really high noise floor. And now we've got one eh, about the same, actually. Oh, I had it, I had it squelched, so that I was kind of hiding it right there. Let's go back to, uh, let's go to 20 meter. So what you're looking at here, this is the noise floor on his signal right there. And if I click zero beat real quick here, let me get this out of the way a little bit. That noise floor is about 20. So I've got my, so he's, if, if I raise this or if I lower this closer to zero, it's going to become less sensitive. See how it starts to go away? His noise floor right there is about 18, uh, maybe about 20, 30 dB. So I'm going to bring this down to 30. And once, once I get this close to 30, which is about where we are right here. 
his waterfall or his stream is going to become visible. All right, now he's starting to become visible. I'm going to click zero beat to bring him in. I'm going to hit QSY. That'll center everything up at 750 hertz, which is what I use on my setting. There's another radio signal out there, kind of in the background. Again, this doesn't increase your sensitivity. It just makes it more visible. Our noise floor is about 28 right now. And we're getting close to... Actually, our noise floor is more like around 32. So I'm going to go right, uh, noise floor is right at 40. So if I go below 40, this whole display is going to pretty much light up because now we are, we're no longer squelching that, that, that noise floor. But if I raise this up, we'll start to squelch the noise floor a little bit. And then what happens is your, your more predominant signals being a CW call will get through, but your noise floor doesn't totally distort your display. So that's kind of what that does there. The other setting that's important is this little scale setting here. Leave this one at about 25. Uh, this one is, is referred to as your, um, uh, the setting that they, they have for that one is your signal width. I leave that at about 25. But again, this, this is your noise floor trip point. Uh, probably a good number to leave that in is, is probably about 20, maybe 25 is a good number because that that keeps you above the noise floor, but it also lets those CW signals that are stronger uh, than the noise floor. It makes them pop out on the display a little bit better. So if we scroll around here, we'll find some. So the other thing uh, is if you want to look at the... Um, Spectrum, you can look at the what's called the Fourier France for this is basically the, 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 the transmit width or spectrometer view of the uh, CW signal. And there's the audio, and there's the waterfall again. Uh, the other thing is um, on the store button, if you have certain frequencies that you want to store, like if I want to click on the store button here. I just left click on it. That frequency is stored in memory. But say, for example, if I want to go down here to another frequency where there's some traffic going on, I can also left click on the store button and it'll store it. If I right click on the store button, it'll show the two frequencies. So if I want to jump back and forth between two different frequencies within, within the same band, I can. See how I'm doing that right there? I'm going to 40. And say if I want to go down here to 30, I can also left click there. So now I have three, three different frequencies. So I can kind of bounce around. If there was a QSO happening and say, for example, QSO is going on and I want to just stay the, store the frequency because I may want to come back to that frequency in five minutes and make another make, try that guy again. I can. Uh, and then if you want to clear those frequencies, what you would do here is you would just simply press the shift key and left click. And then those frequencies are gone. Whoops. Shift, shift, and the left key, and now the frequency. And if I if I if I right click now, now there's no more frequencies in there. So uh, again, this is your noise floor right here. This is your threshold to the noise floor. And um, so just kind of think about you know everything's in decibels here. Uh, let me clear out the. Uh, let me clear the. I'm going to erase everything up here. And then uh, when I'm done, I just simply click here and basically shut down both the uh, FL rig and FL digi. So that's how I do, uh, that's kind of how I do my calls. Um, just wanted to show you some stuff. I got, I'll do some more videos, but th that's, that's how I do it. So anyway, hope you enjoyed the video and thanks for watching.